does it make sense? Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm yeah. uh, trying to say here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're kind of so, borrowing money to bet more, right? Well, in fact, we're not borrowing. Well, we're sort of borrowing here. So when we're short selling, we're effectively, yeah, we're, we're effectively borrowing the stock and we sell it. So we're not actually borrowing money, but we're borrowing the stock. So in some ways, yeah, we're on a margin where we're actually mm -hmm. borrowing some. So we're taking more risk for sure, but it's not like we actually have to actively borrow money. You know, short selling is a pretty common thing. And so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're short selling the stock into the market and we use the proceeds to fund the other positions. Mm -hmm. And so we're actually controlling more than twice as much money with what we've got than we would have done previously. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it depends sometimes on your broker, whether you, you're able to do this or not. So there's a lot of rules for each institution, each broker. But what's important here is to understand the principle that you can have these portfolios that are long and short, and they're basically giving you leverage. I mean, you could just outright borrow money. You could just go to the bank and say, give me another dollar 20 and you put it in. But the problem is that, you know, when you do that, you're, you're really on, on, on borrowed money. Whereas here, you know, short selling is, is not quite the same thing. And in fact, what happens is normally you pay a certain margin on your shorts and the margin is usually a, a relatively complex calculation that your broker does. And sometimes you pay 10% or maybe sometimes 30% of the value of your shorts as a margin. So in this case, basically, let's just say we pay 10% of our short and margin. So our short is 60%, 10% effectively brings us to 6%. So in fact, the money that we pay is 106%, right? So if you needed to go to your bank effectively to borrow money for your portfolio, you would have to only go to the bank and borrow 6% mm -hmm. and then put it in your portfolio rather than 120%. Yeah. So it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> so of course you need to have a case for short selling. You know, that's not always true, right? It depends what you're doing, but you know, you can't always short sell, especially actually it's quite difficult to short sell in equities. So it sounds amazing, but it's actually quite hard sometimes because mm -hmm. equity short selling can be difficult. All right. So I hope that was interesting. And have you got any more questions to this topic? Yeah, I mean, maybe a bit off topic or maybe, but still related kind of. I listened recently to something where it's told about like certain indicators, so to say, that you're like... Yeah, kind of certain events, right? That you have like for, for a market. And, and I would be interested if like, if there's any indicators, so to say for like shorts, like in that regard. Yeah. So as I said, there's many, many indicators and so on. And there's also indicators, so to speak for shorts, but there's what you need to understand is all markets are different. So for example, it's quite difficult to trade the short side for equities, but if you go to commodities or foreign exchange rates, it's much, much easier to trade the short side. Why? Because commodities or foreign exchange is a zero sum game. So they're not productive assets, right? Nothing gets added. They don't add value in that sense, right? If you trade gold, Gold is gold, right? But gold yeah. doesn't produce anything, whereas companies produce. So companies are not a zero sum game, but Forex and commodities and so on, they're what you call a zero sum game. So they don't add value directly. You know, their price might go up, but they're not productive assets. That's why they're actually much easier to trade on the short side because what we say in quant finance that their return profile isn't skewed. Their return profile is, is symmetric. Whereas the equity return profile is actually skewed to the right, meaning it's skewed to positive returns. And so when you trade anything pretty much other than equities, it's much, much easier to do that on the short side. Makes sense. Yeah, definitely. So there are short indicators and stuff for equities, but it's quite a difficult 
Sim. 